Good morning, FlossTube. It's Pam, Stitching Between the Lines. It is Thursday morning, March 28th, 2024. I had to look at my book of days. FlossTube number 136. So, monthly update. Um, I The baby's napping. Her monitor's right next to me, so if, she, if I hear her, you'll hear her. Um, <laughs> so, anyway, she usually sleeps a pretty decent nap in the morning. So, she's down free time. Yay. Um, <clears throat> so it's the last day of school before spring break here in New York. Hi everybody, Future Pam here. I'm editing my most recent video, the one you're watching, and uh, I rambled, so I'm just tidying it up and I couldn't like chop it together to make any sense. I'm back home for a few days, so there's the clock. <laughs> in case you didn't notice the other familiar things, we're just facing a little different direction. Um, <clears throat> so anyhow, the reason uh, we have an extra day off for spring break, April 8th, is that there's a solar eclipse that day, and where I live is in the path of totality. So at 3.20 in the afternoon, it'll go dark as the moon moves across the path of the sun. It's a big deal, apparently. I Everybody's got giving out solar eclipse glasses, um, or you can buy them at the store, the grocery store, or wherever, all over the place. They're having, there's going to be solar eclipse parties, gatherings, the whole thing. On the news, they've been talking about it for months. They say we're expecting to get three to 500,000 extra people in the area that day. The warnings are don't go, don't plan to go anywhere, don't plan doctor's appointments, just stay home. Um, they say pack your car if you do go somewhere as if you're going out into a snowstorm, like with a full gap, tank of gas, extra food, stuff like that. Because when it happens, the c people will stop. People will stop their cars. If you go to an event, they tell you to stay for the whole time uh, because you just won't get out. It reminds me of going to um, see fireworks where they just pack in the cars and people get out of their cars and um, go to you know a more comfortable spot as a group and watch the fireworks. So in this case, it'll be the eclipse. And when it's over, it'll be all, all those cars needing to leave. So even if the weather's not great or it's a cloudy sky, um, it will still go dark. So that will happen even if you can't watch and see. It, it is exciting. I think it's a once in a hundred year. I think the last time there was a total eclipse here was a hundred years ago. So people are traveling from all over to be here. It's in the middle of the afternoon, so it's a good time of day. Uh, it starts in Texas. It starts outside the United States, but it comes up from Texas and it comes up. I had a picture. I don't have it anymore. <laughs> Uh, not trying to make this clip even worse than the first. Uh, if you want to know about the total solar eclipse, you can Google it. Um, so anyway, that's happening here. So grocery stores are closing. That's the only place I know that's closing. We have Wegmans. We're the home of Wegmans in this area. So they're closing. A uh, little grocery store that's close to me um, is put a sign on the door. They're closing so their employees can go outside and watch it. I, I imagine everywhere, every, everywhere, people will come outside to watch it. Um, whether they have to chase customers out of the building or not, I don't know. So anyway, let's go back and let's talk cross-stitch and maybe we can get this video uh, put together. I already, in the video, had a couple little um, blips uh, where I had to stop the video. So um, let's see. I appreciate you watching, though, in the event that it's a hot mess, but whatever. Every now and again. So anywho, um, my uh, book of days is here in front of me now that there's a lot in there, written in there. Um, I have some things to show you and obviously some things to talk about because there went five minutes. Um, <clears throat> I don't think it'll be a long class too, but I don't know. You never know. I have a cold. So that kind of sucks. I get a lot of colds, so uh, I don't know. <clears throat> I was at something this past weekend and around a lot of people, so what do you know? So I don't feel terrible or anything. I just sound stuffy. Um, all right, so what have I been working on? I have been, well, okay, let's pick up where the last video left off. Let's talk about, we're going to go on sort of a mishmash of order. Um, I left off my last video showing you that I had just finished um, 
Kingdom of Books, uh, Cross Stitch Fantasy. Let me see. I'm sure I crossed it out. Um, Kingdom Cross Stitch Fantasy um, was the p pattern designer. I don't know. It's a little hard to get all the full on details because it's in Russian. Everything's in Russian. So anyway, I had showed you my completed. It took, I finished it just shy of its fifth birthday. And I was hemming and hawing over what to do about FFOing it, how to frame it. I was thinking about doing it myself or maybe taking it to Hobby Lobby, but I wanted to wash it first. So at the last video, the last time we met, I had taken some of the red threads and run them underwater and put them on a paper towel um, to see what the bleeding might be like. And there was a little bit of bleeding. So I did it again um, with more reds and there was more bleeding. I think when I did the first time out of four reds, only one ran. I don't know, it happened again. So I wasn't sure what I was gonna do. And what I ended up doing was um, taking it like the very next day to the framer that I have used for years that has a cross stitch store in Rochester. And um, I really trust her to know what to do. So I took it there and had it framed and I got it back and I have it to show you. And it's huge as you know, we kind of expect. So here it is. I'm not sure how close I can get with anything. The impact really is in the, seeing it from a distance. It came out absolutely beautiful. Um, she She's, a, her eye for color and is just perfect um, and we hemmed and hawed over what new it, neutrals and uh, this is not ever what I would have dreamed of that matched so perfect in the brown mat the earth tones and just the way everything just pops out it is amazing I uh, posted a couple pictures on my Instagram page on Instagram and um, was saying I didn't know where to hang it, but it's hanging on the office wall, kind of around the corner, but you can see it from the doorway <laughs> here. So on Instagram, I said I hung it where my husband's master's golf tournament photo was, which is on the, a different wall, and um, he hadn't noticed right away, but ultimately I didn't want it on that wall because nobody could see it but me when I'm in here. Um, so it's on a different wall that, you know, if you're looking in the doorway, you can see it. So, um, yeah, that was a huge, huge, huge accomplishment. And um, I appreciate all the kind, kind, kind words. And I'm just thrilled that that's done. Because <sighs> five years. I have other things. Well, the only other thing I think that's been in the works five years is my heaven and earth design. Um, and the other long term, I'm looking at my list. I always keep a running list of my whips. The other one, um, that's been I've been at for a while is Rural Post Office at Christmas by Bucilla and um, it is full coverage but nothing like I mean it's just it's nothing like but the pattern is not um, terribly user friendly there's a lot of outlining and they've just plunked the outlining um, it's and it's in multiple colors the outlining so there's different lines that represent the outlining for the different colors of thread you're supposed to use. And they're just sort of plopped right on top of everything. And so a lot of detail is lost under the outlining. So there's a little bit of a struggle with that. If that wasn't there, or if they had published the pattern in two steps, like one just the stitching, and then a second one with the outlining, that would have been a lot more user friendly. But anyway, I really want to put some time in on that, but under this current situation where uh, I'm babysitting during the day, it's too much, um, it's too much stuff, it's too much concentration, it's too much that kind of stuff. While in the earlier part of the calendar year when I was uh, had the baby, I could do a little bit of stitching because I could just sit on the floor and she's rolling around and playing on, you know, the quilt on the floor and stuff. And especially with Kingdom of Books, I could just get one thread, like I'd, I'd have the plan laid out. Let me just pull it up. 
pull it up here so I can show you what I'm talking about. Most of the books are like one color that sort of goes down. You just have to keep track of how many stitches you're doing in each row, but that was easy to do. I have one stitch handy, it, you know, one thread color handy and just make my way down. And some of them lent itself to that better, but I could just make my way down. And some days I could finish a full color or even two um, in just a, in times when she was up and then do some when she was napping. But now that she's all grown up, she crawls and pulls herself up and thinks she's gonna walk at an exceedingly young age. Um, she lets go and thinks she's going places. My daughter, this child's mother, walked at nine months and my son walked at 10 months. The other one, not so much. But I wouldn't be surprised if she's walking um, by nine months or in that area because her brain tells her she can go from point A to point B. I don't know. Kids are funny. Um, but anyway, took a quick break there for a second. Um, so, okay, so Kingdom of Books is done and on the wall. And um, the other big project that realistically could get done um, this year is uh, Rural Post Office at Christmas by Busilla. But I'm not sure it will. We'll see. After the babysitting gig is up at the end of the school year, which is at the end of June, um, <clears throat> I won't have the same issue. I, I should be able to focus on it. But in the meantime, starting tonight into when I'm back to the babysitting gig after the uh, April 8th, after kids, you know, go back to school, um, I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to hit it hard and see what I can accomplish. I don't have a picture right here to show you. Um, I don't have it with me. So we'll see. You just I'll try to remember to take a picture. I'm not always good at that. It's one of those things. Um, so anyway, what have I been doing other than these things? <coughs> Excuse me. So sorry. If I waited until I didn't have a cold, which I'm sure it'll be gone in a day or two. Um, you know, who knows what I'll be doing. Uh, anyway, all right, so the whip, I'm gonna, still, I need to go in reverse order because I said in the last video, I thought during March, I would work on a different, maybe a different project every week. Well, what I ended up doing was working on two projects and I worked on them until they were done. Two projects, two more things done. So the first one um, was, Christmas Window 2, which is by Sarah. She, Sarah G, Sarah, the last name is Guarmani, um, but her pattern names, I think when they're, when you look them up, are just under Sarah. I feel like it used to be a Sarah G, but I don't know. Anyway, the um, patterns, they're so cute, all of them, all of them. They come with, they all come with some kind of wooden buttons. So this one has two angel buttons. So they're not on the pattern yet. Um, until I figure out what I'm gonna do for framing, um, I'm just gonna hold those aside. So I'm gonna put a picture here. Of the piece where I left it. I started it in, I think, in early January. Um, let, me give, let me give the facts. Let me get be a fact-based uh, floss tuber here. I started it December 30th. I worked on it for two days, the 30th and the 31st. So you've seen the picture. And I picked it up, at, um, and I thought I will just work on it at some, but I just kept going. I thought the vine would be nightmarish to do. Instead, uh, it moved right along. So I got the top done and then uh, the bottom done, clearly. I love a wintry village scene like this. Colors, uh, it just makes me think of the prairie schooler patterns a little bit that I've done. 
Uh, so anyway, those wooden angels hang one on this string and one on this one. So it's so cute. It came out so cute. I started, when I was stitching it and starting this window frame, I thought, oh, that is such a dull brown. But really, now that it's done, it's just beautiful. I don't even know what to call the fabric. Everybody knows what this is, right? That polka dot. It, it just worked up so nice. I, I think this would look really nice on a something that made you think you were looking out on a night sky, um, like a dark blue, but that wasn't gonna be by me. I can't stitch like that. And then sometimes I felt when I was working like the dots, which are kind of like snowflakes, um, overwhelmed the, the little ones that you stitch in. So I think if anybody had this pattern and wanted to stitch it, I don't think it has to be done on the polka dot. It definitely adds, you know, some depth to it, I guess, with the s snowflakes I've stitched. So that was one finish. That was a whip, like I said, that I started in um, the, at the end of December. And then this other one, I don't remember exactly when I started it, but it was towards the, the latter part of the year. Um, ooh, let me get the picture out, sorry. Um, oh, somebody, I bought the PDF and I printed it out and um, it, there was a lot of pages. And not that it's hard, it's just a lot of pages to fold. And it was Tiny Modernist 12 Christmas Carols. I have been showing this all along ever since I started it because I just loved it so, so much. And I was kind of thinking I would do like one a month, except apparently except in March when I was going to do all of the rest, which was certainly the whole bottom row. And I think the whole middle row, I can't swear. <laughs> oh, maybe I had these two done. I was going to go back and look and then I forgot. Um, so yeah, I'm going to, let's go with it. I did this one and all of these in March and now it's done and it is cute. It is so cute. Um, fabric choice. No idea. If somebody's dying to know, I'll look it up, but I just found a piece of fabric in my stash and here it is. Isn't it the best? I love it. And while the title is 12 Christmas Carols, these are not all Christmas carols. Um, there are a few that are uh, maybe lines from Twas a Night Before Christmas. Let me look. Uh, and to all a good night. That's um, Twas the Night. Oh, it's the whole time for Christmas. Not a, not a creature was stirring is from that. Not a not a song. Uh, the rest are songs. Christmas carols. So yeah, isn't that gorgeous? My hand under there. <laughs> I don't know what I'm gonna do with it, finishing wise. I can in my mind see it with a red frame. I am um, becoming very space challenged when it comes to um, finishes on the wall and I know at Christmas I you know you take down all the stuff and you put up the new stuff and um, or the Christmas stuff but um, I don't know I'm uncertain so let me clean up all my pages which shockingly I'm not gonna keep because I only have room for so much stuff and it's on my um, it's, it's saved uh, in one of the either Pattern Keeper or Good Reader. I don't know which. And so that led me to with just a couple days of the month left. And so I went through the, the whips that I had with me and Winter Cheer, which is a limited edition Twin Peak Primitive pattern that I bought a couple of years ago. Um, and it, I bought it from... I'm not sure it's a... I'm not sure... I mean, it's TwinPeakPrimitives.com. I bought it from, like, limited edition. Uh, I, I don't believe the website is the same as where I bought it. I want to 
going to be fact-based, and then I go and mess that up. Let me think on it for a second. Um, limited edition Twin Peak TTP, something like that. You could Google it. Every now and then they put together um, a pattern in the supplies, and it came in its own um, project bag that's printed with this on it. It's just DMC threads, but I honestly do not know that you can get this pattern, so that kind of sucks. Okay, sorry. Picture here. I worked on it a little. Tiny bit, I think in December. And I had, uh, I had, the, the house is all two different colors, like stripes, like a, gives the clap, you know, the siding, like some depth. I had all of one color done with the exception of one spot. I'm thinking I must've run out of thread and I didn't go and thread my needle up again. And I had the brown I, like window shutters done, but I didn't have this stuff that's inside of them done. I had this tree I had started, snow on the bottom was done. Um, so the first thing I did was filled in this part of the roof and did the chimney and the color in the chimney is the color that runs in all the windows. So I did that and then I just started the filling in and that was just yesterday. So none of it was anything that took any amount of time. I might get a little bit more done today and then, um, I'll, I'm going to, I think that's the plan is to pull out, um, rural post office at Christmas. This this is stitched on a piece of fabric flare, 28 or 32 count stone fabric flare. I don't think they sent the fabric. It would be weird that they would send the fabric and it would be in the package. So I honestly do not know. But it seems like if you're buying the limited edition kit that it came with fabric. Limited edition, nobody can get it anyway. So, sorry to be a tease, but that's what's my whip. Um, might get a few more stitches today. So, how's that? Still not, <laughs> I don't know. Productive, that's what that was, productive. Um, I got to stop by, got to. I stopped by um, Hobby House, which I mentioned before has moved and it's very, very close to the house where we spend our winters. And I ordered my, um, my pre-orders for market were from Hobby House and that I would come in and pick them up. So once they had it ready, they sent me an email and I went over and the store's not open for business yet. I believe they're filling orders. So there, that's going on. Um, I was to understand that they thought maybe there was, they were going to be open by April 1st, but I'm not entirely sure that would be Monday. There were a lot of boxes in there, <laughs> a lot, uh, but it's going to be a lovely space. Um, so anyway, I picked up my market order, which I kind of already talked about. I ordered the Frosty Tiny Town and, um, American Welcome. So I have the other one. What is it? Oh, live on little, not live on little. <laughs> An example of not living on little, named live on little. And I had purchased the Vicki Clayton silks for that because she has a pack on her website, victoriaclaytonsilks.com. I don't know, Google it. That's all I do to get there. And I thought, I saw like Color and Cotton had, um, had packs of uh, thread packs for this but I was kind of thinking I might like to keep it in the same um, sort of thread hues style whatever's as my live on little that I haven't started but I'm pretending I'm going to and so I ended up ordering the Vicki Clayton silks plus the color and cotton were sold out and now the color and cotton was back in, but I had ordered the Vicki Clayton silk. So um, we'll see how this plays out. Still won't like the words. Uh, would take those out. As same with Live on Little. 
Um, don't care for the words. Don't care for sayings, especially ones I've never heard. Um, so this was something I bought at market because I thought maybe, especially with Live on Little, that this little compass may be something I can put in the sky to fill some of the space. We will see. So that's it. That's my whole market purchase thing. That's it. So I think I've mentioned before that I um, <clears throat> couldn't find a gentle arts color called Vintage Lilac. I think that's its name. I don't know. I know these things and then suddenly I don't know them when I need the information. So I was on the notify me list at one, two, three stitch. And I have somebody, the last time I mentioned it, somebody told me somewhere where I could order it. And yes, they had it. They had the 10 yard skeins, which was overkill on this subject on the pattern I needed it for. And I couldn't find anything else I wanted there. And they have a minimum order requirement. <clears throat> so I didn't buy it. I, um, so I'm on the one, two, three stitch notify me. And by the time I get to get to that email and get to the website, it's already sold out. So I'm on, was on the notify me again and I got notified and I was quick this time, relatively speaking, um, to go put it in my cart and then start browsing around. <laughs> danger, danger, danger. Because I couldn't think of any, I didn't have any other needs. Because who does? I mean, you know. So I uh, went to my wish list, and I, I think these things were on sale. Bothy threads were on sale that week at One Two Three Stitch, and so I um, put a couple of, in my cart. This one, which I love, a snowy street scene. Holy cow, that is so pretty. Um, there's Ada fabric in there, I think, sixteen count. I don't know if I'll work on it or not. I really need to feel it. Um, I just love it. It came boxed up so fun. Just a clever box, right? That says open with caution or carefully or something on it. Open with care, I think it said. So just everything looks nice in there. Um, pattern is a lot of pages long. Threads are pre-sorted. Uh, the fabric. We'll see. Um, I stitch it. I need to serge it, but I stitch in hand, so I don't know. I um, will see maybe if I have something else that I would like to stitch on, other fabric. I ordered some of the Color and Cotton's blues that were their colors of the month, I think last month maybe, and um, they have shipped, and I believe they're in the mail today. So maybe I'll pair up differently. I just feel like this is just me. Sometimes people will buy a kit and these kits are not inexpensive, but it's a very average kit price. And they'll say, but I'm replacing the fabric and the thread. I'm like, what was the point of buying the kit? I understand sometimes it's the only way it gets patterned. Um, <clears throat> and probably that's true for this, but I'm not, I'm not just trashing it all. If I, I, I stitch in hand, so that will, that fabric will soften right up. It will be very pliable. Um, and then I also ordered this. I don't think this was on my wish list. I think this was just on my, in the Bothy Threads category, and I just really liked it. It's just perfect when it comes to a lakeside, um, New England, the captain's house. To me, it's lakeside because I live on a lake. Um, yeah, it's another one that has, um, this one has 14 count Ada. I may change that. I don't know. We'll see. I st was starting to say I ordered some of the color and cotton blues, and I think they're coming. And um, if something, like this is a perfect like bright blue sky, like a sunny day. Um, we'll see what I do when it comes time to actually do something on them. And then um, I ordered on stash unloading probably. So anybody who watches Lynette of uh, Homesteading home on the Homefront, she 
recently worked on a bell pole and it was a Lou Fuller pattern and there was a bigger name across the front that mine doesn't have of a person and I don't know how they all mesh. That was a designer who was the person who, I don't know. So it, hers was called like um, Sunday Morning View, I think, and it was four houses in the same vein as this which is called Snowy River. And I just loved it. I mean, I loved it. When I when I saw Lynette's, I went looking on eBay and I could have bought the kit, but I'm like, just, just you know, be independent. Don't copycat somebody else. <laughs> I don't know who I was that day. Um, but anyway, <laughs> so when I saw this on Stash Unloading, I had to get it. Um, it's a, a companion piece. And if you go and search for Lou Fuller patterns, there's some lovely patterns that aren't the bell pull style necessarily. Um, I think I went looking on eBay and um, yeah, so you can find them. And I didn't pay anything. Maybe it was $5, I don't know. Um, Cause it was the only thing I bought too. I was like, I couldn't find anything else on that person's listings. Um, but I wanted this bad enough that I went ahead and just did it, just bought it and um, I just love it so that's it in my my cross stitch world um, no big Easter plans holiday plans we get together as a family and do brunch um, and that's it I think I'm looking forward to well okay so I'm off of work right um, and so then I have to schedule everything that I can schedule in that time like a haircut and appointments and whatever. Um, I have a doctor's appointment that's I've been waiting a long time for um, on April 8th, the day we're not supposed to schedule anything like that, uh, but it's in the morning, so I don't know. Where, I'm, I'm still trying to wrap my brain around this bumper to bumper traffic. Um, they say they, they being the you know news reporters who get their information from I don't know where, that if you go to an event because there's events everywhere everybody who can host something a restaurant a winery a park of a, a, a wherever is having an eclipse event they say to plan to stay the whole time because it's going to be like bumper to bumper traffic it makes me think of when you go to the fireworks somewhere and they just pack the cars in and all the people are right in a spot but also the warnings are about being out on the road because they said on the throughway, on the highways, people, when it's gonna, going to occur, will pull over by the side of the road, get out and watch it. So that's a hazard or to be actually driving and trying to glimpse up and see it. So just interesting, right? On the news, they reported that they talked to Airbnb and Airbnb said that this area was one of the highest bookings for Airbnbs for that day. Um, and I don't know why, I don't know. I mean, yes, anybody in the path of totality. Um, it's the time of day too, I think, being in the middle of the afternoon, it's convenient, a convenient time. So yeah, that'll be something interesting to report on when uh, we meet again. So. Yeah, all right. So I've stopped this video a couple times. I have no idea how long it is. We'll just have to wait and see when I string them together and add the couple pictures in. I think that's all I have is a couple pictures to put in. Uh, we'll see how far I can get. My iPad always seems, my new iPad seems to need a few minutes. I don't know. It's not, I, when I edit the video and send it to, um, want to send it to YouTube, it's not there for me to send for a while so i'm not sure what's happening but anyway whatever you're not sitting on the edge of your seat waiting for me i'm sure i'm positive so that's it all right i'm going to speculate we're half an hour long so have a good holiday if you celebrate easter or your kids are off of school or you're traveling because um it's a perfect time of year to travel um yeah i hope everybody has a good and safe holiday should you uh celebrate and um you know all the good things spring i hope spring has sprung where you are uh we're expecting a little snow next week we've had um just in the last weekend 
time runs. The end of last week, uh, we had enough snow to actually need like the snow plow guy. And this is only the second time this year. So that's just unbelievable. Unbelievable for my part of the country. But everything's green. The sun is out a lot. There's still some snow on the ground. But um, let me look. Maybe I'm lying. Maybe it really did melt. But like where it got pushed into big piles off of driveways and stuff. That's always the last stuff to go. So anyway, ramble, ramble, ramble. Till next time. Bye.